Hello, good morning, afternoon, wherever you are right now and whatever time of the day it is. Um, working? Working. Here's a list of things. I haven't been... I haven't been here on the video for a long time because it was boom. It was summer and summer means busy Chris. So I want to talk about a few things um, that happened in the past. I want to talk about a few things that are coming up, including uh, tours, of course, including information about the book, which is being translated to English. You'll get a super secret sneak preview of the new cover and the new title for the uh, US market which I completely love. Um, I'll talk about banners, I'll talk about a new website, I'll talk about a freebie that I'm going to give away and or I'm actually already giving away, but it's not of a lot of use for you right now. And uh, a little call for help. So let's start. Let me pin this right next to the camera so I can talk about a few things. Yep, so it's been busy and I'm back for a bit of... A, yeah, well, I... I thought it was downtime, but it's not because <laughs> I'm doing still <laughs> lots of things, but I'm enjoying every minute of it. So don't be worried. I'm not going to burn out here. Um, I have been holding workshops and traveling and uh, doing lots of things. I'm actually preparing for another workshop that I'll be doing um, in the upcoming week in Basel in Switzerland. So um, that's a company workshop, a corporate kind of thing. Um a uh, whole big company of real estate. Uh, I, I think they have 45 real estate agents and uh, they need to learn photography of buildings inside, outside. And um, they can they can certainly learn something here. Um, I'm totally happy to, uh, to be doing this. Um, also preparing for the United States, going to San Diego and New York in just um, about a couple of weeks. Roughly, well, less than a couple of weeks, actually. So that is all coming up. There's lots going on there. Um, the most impressive thing that I've done over the last uh, three, four weeks was Ireland. Uh, the north of Ireland, not Northern Ireland. There's this uh, distribution. There's Northern Ireland, and then there's the north of Ireland, the northwest of Ireland, which is technically part of the Republic of Ireland. That was photographically from a from a lighting point of view from a weather point of view from the people uh, the landscapes the seascapes the sunsets the, it's just one of the most amazing times um it was an amazing group as well and you know the photography was as as my friend trevor would say off the scale it was really really amazing um here is a link to um, a Flickr album where I've uh, put some of the photography. You will also find some of that photography on Facebook. Facebook. Um, on my Twitter stream. Twitter. On Google+. Plus, Google+. Plus, and Pinterest and <laughs> Instagram. I've put them everywhere because I'm so proud of them. Um, you, can, you can shoot there. Even during midday, because the, the cloud cover with the holes in between is going to make so such an interesting light. It's just, boom, blew my mind. So, <clears throat> Ireland was amazing. Um, and we're, we're doing it again in September. So, that is already planned. Uh, it was absolutely a no-brainer. We have to do this again, because it was just mind-bogglingly good. And uh, from here... From Germany, it's actually not that far. It's um, it's one of those travel. I mean, I, I love coming to the United States, but hey, Ireland is just so much closer. Not that much jet lag, and uh, makes things just a little bit easier. And uh, I know that a lot of you, especially in the United States, uh, have Irish roots, so that might be a good opportunity to to see a bit more of Ireland, see a bit more of the old home country. Um, speaking of workshops and tours, um. I've been bit so hard by the travel bug. I am going to do more tours, of course. Um, and there was a lot of planning over the last weeks and months. And um, here's the list. Ethiopia in January. Um, again, Ethiopia was just um, one of those places you get there and you immediately understand that all your preconceptions are completely wrong. Ethiopia is this 
big, huge country with a lot of different climate zones, with beautiful, lush, green hills, with the with a desert that actually is the hottest inhabited place on Earth, with uh, just landscapes and people, and it's just one of those amazing places that um, that I had a completely different uh, picture of. And I, I I had to completely re redo my entire uh, picture of Ethiopia. Um, also, um, if you want to come, it's in January. You have to be quick because we are um, approaching the end of the window where we can still book flights for a decent price, and um, which means there are a couple of seats open, a couple of spots open. And if you want to be with us, hurry up be quick um lake baikal next thing that kind of appeared on my radar without any warning um i was offered to join the lake baikal tour um it was offered by tim Vollmer, who i also did the iceland tours with and i thought initially yeah let me do that let me go there as a photographer not as a as a as, a, as an instructor and i looked at it and i i said well and i'm definitely going there but I said I need to bring a few people. I need to ma- I need to open this up to uh, some of you out there. You. Um, so this is what I'm doing. Like Baikal in March 2016. Uh, it's in Siberia. It is um, another place that probably has a few misconceptions around it. Um, the world will be in jeeps on the ice of the lake. It's the biggest freshwater lake in the world. It's also the oldest one and. Um, it's the clearest one as well. So just seeing some of those photos um, makes me want to go there even more. Um, by the way, speaking of misconceptions, misconceptions about Ethiopia. Let me clear up one thing because that comes up in uh, discussions all the time. Ethiopia is on the other side of Africa from where the Ebola crisis happened so we're talking three and a half thousand miles in between those places so that there's no danger there um the same with lake baikal it's in siberia it's in russia there's this conflict going on in the ukraine right now which is almost four thousand miles away that is a huge distance so even even there is some some, russia is big right so uh, the ukraine conflict is completely uh, on the almost on the other side of the world so um don't worry about that okay um lake baikal only two seats uh open so there are two spots and when they're gone they're gone and um, the interest is quite high so if you're quick you can come with us another thing where i think a lot of americans will go what lofoten or as the norwegian people say lofoten or Lufuten, I think, um, is is one of those places that has been... Okay, two things about the Lofoten trip. Lofoten is uh, a, a few islands at the edge of Norway. It's in the Arctic Circle. And there are two things about it that have made this a desirable thing for me to see since I was a child. I remember, I remember reading about the Midnight Sun, about... Um, the summer solstice in June, where the sun around the Arctic Circle is never going to set. 24-7 sunrise, sun being low above the horizon for the longest time. That is intriguing, especially not just from a, from a geek kind of geography, geek kind of point of view. No, from a photographer's point of view, because that is beautiful light around the clock, um, you can get up at 3 a.m. and take photos and don't need a flash. That and Lofoten itself is just... Ask anyone in Germany, ask most people in Europe and they will go, oh, Lofoten, I want to see this before I die. Because it is uh, the landscapes, the, the the peaks, the hills, the mountains, the sea, um, the, the bays, everything is just... It's just an amazing place to shoot. Um, somewhat like... Donegal, I guess, but different again. We actually had a lady from uh, Norway with us in Donegal, and she confirmed that, yeah, there are similarities, but it's still very different. So 
if it's anywhere near the Donegal thing, hey, Lofoten, Norway, uh, in June, around June the 21st, um, when the summer solstice happens. So Midnight Sun and Lofoten, a childhood dream is coming true for me. Um, then, yeah, Donegal again in September. And um, don't have to talk about that a lot because you've heard me ramble on about that for long enough. And then I'm already planning into 2017 because... We're going to Bhutan again. Bhutan is one of those places that we went to in uh, May this year of 2015. The India and then crossover to Bhutan trip. Bhutan is this mountain kingdom, the kingdom of happiness or the kingdom of the thunder dragon. Um, they have many interesting names for it. This is one of the most amazing places in Asia that I've been to. Partially because it is not really touristy. They have tight controls over tourism. They keep tourists out. Um, almost no tourists there. Getting in there is not that easy. So I'm really happy that we managed to get another tour together. Not just to Bhutan, which is, again, I can only say it as it's a, it's a magnificent place. But during the festival season in November 2017. So there are several amazing festivals there. Colorful, the culture, the people, the dances, the, the, the religious part of it. Um, Bhutan is uh, the Buddhist part of it, of course. Lots of colors, lots of... It's, it's going to be mind-blowingly good. November 2017. Um, mark that in your calendar. And that's it for the workshops. 2017 is already um, in the planning. There are a couple of more things that will be planned into 2017. Probably before Christmas, I'll have them up. So stay tuned for that. 2017 is going to be uh, an amazing year. So is 2016. Three big tours in 2016. Ethiopia, Lake Baikal, and Donegal. And maybe one more that I don't really... that I can't really talk about uh, just yet. Okay. Tours done. All the links here. This is the place to go. Discoverthetopfloor.com has everything on it. The book. The Film photography book, Absolute Analog, um, that we wrote, that Monica and I wrote, is about to hit the stores here in Germany. Um, a couple more weeks, I guess, and then it's out. Uh, it's in print. It's already being distributed, I think. And uh, the first people should hold it in hand um, early October. That's the guess right now. And I'm very proud of it. Monica is very proud of it. And we are... Also proud of translating this to English. Um, the translation is already in progress. Um, we're working with the translator and because translation is more than just making uh, sw switching the words from German to English. Translation also means localization. There will be measurements that need to be adapted. We measure in grams in the US, it's ounces. We measure in centimeters in the US, it's uh, inches or feet and it's just a lot of things um, that need to be changed with a very special focus on the film world because 4x5 inch film here in Germany is 4x5 inch film. And if we speak middle format, uh, medium format 6x6, six six, that is 6x6 six six centimeters. The same is being used in, in the United States. 35 millimeter film is 35 millimeter film. It's not some weird uh, imperial measurement. No, it's millimeters. So, so there are some of the things you can... Um, you can translate or localize some of them you shouldn't because so you see the complication one of the things that the, where the localization is going to be especially interesting is the availability of certain film materials because of course we have all these tables um, all these tables for film in the uh, German book the different films the different slide films the different color negative films and black and white films that are available um, but this is of course Germany, we have lots of European brands that are not as readily available in the United States. So I thought. But then we started asking for help on tips from the top floor in a special episode and on Twitter and on Facebook and so on. And we got some responses back uh, of people who actually import these films into the United States. So they are available. Um, some of the more generic films are available under different names. So it's, it's, it has to be localized. And that's one of the things we're working on right now. What else is on the list? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> I've been 
I've been naughty. I've bought myself one of uh, these things. The Apple Watch. Yeah, I know. You, no one needs it. It's um, it's good. It's good in some things. It's not good in other things. Um, but I like it. And I have it. And uh, having the Apple Watch also made me um, realize that I can actually give away something... Um, for the upcoming WatchOS 2. Now, at this point of at the point of recording this, WatchOS 2 hasn't been released just yet. But when it's out, you'll be able to put a watch face or different watch faces on the watch that are photo based. And um, I'm so proud of the Donegal photography that I've made seven watch faces that I've formatted seven of those photos to be good watch faces. So the, there's good space for the, the the time to be on and that it looks nice and uh, harmonic so those are free go grab them um, this is the address go grab them get them uh, for free and um, have them on your wrist what else um well travel in general I mean, travel is the is the the big theme here so um, there's one episode that I just want to point you back in case you are not up to date about travel photography I talked about Donegal I've talked about learning um, I have learned Believe it or not, I've learned a lot of new things in Donegal. I've managed to deepen some of my previous understanding. I finally, um, after years of owning them and sometimes using them, I've finally come around to spend two weeks using nothing but like ND filters and ND grad filters. And um, so uh, the things I've kind of known before are now in-depth knowledge. And that is just amazing to have your creative uh, tool set expanded by more knowledge um, so now I have in my creative toolbox I can just take out another thing if I need to and that is amazing I've also ordered a new ND grad filter because the old one that I had was too cheap and it turned out to be a bit of a color problem because it leaves uh, it it lets through too much of the red spectrum um, that's what you get for being cheap so um, new one on the way that's hopefully a lot better so, that was it for today. Um, thanks for your time. How long was this now? Oh, almost 20 minutes. So, um, I'll let you get back to whatever you were doing before. Um, thanks so much for the support. You guys are amazing. Take care.